Today I'm going to share a very interesting Hario switch technique I've been working with lately. It's a super simple, very easy technique, so everybody can do this. It can be adjusted to fit the types of beans you're brewing, the capabilities of your grinder, and of course also your personal taste and preference. And it's so easy and simple to memorize, you won't have to look at your phone, which can be quite annoying the first thing in the morning. The reason I'm sharing this technique with you today is because I have a feeling that the switch is going to get a little bit of a revival. So just in case you haven't seen it, Tetsu Kasuya, the guy who invented the 4-6 method, recently shared his new recipe in a Japanese video that got a lot of attention. And I think that's going to inspire a lot of coffee people to go in and give their personal take on how to best brew the Hario switch. So if you don't have one already, I think now is a great time to pick one up. Anyway, I think uh, Tetsu's recipe is uh, really excellent and uh, quite interesting. Uh, he brings in some new ideas, but it's not quite what I want from uh, my coffee. I like it a little bit more extracted, and I also want a recipe that's a little bit easier to memorize. So first of all, with this recipe here, it's so simple that you won't have any problems doing it in the morning when you wake up, you haven't had any sleep and you're just super groggy, uh, you'll be able to remember this. So this recipe here is designed to extract more, to be very consistent and to emphasize those more fruity flavors that the uh, puro or coffee is usually famous for. So if I had to describe this recipe, I would kind of say it's the flavor of pour over with the ease of use of immersion. But enough rambling, let's get to the recipe. So first we're going to measure out our beans. The grind size is medium fine, so I'm using 6 on the K-Max. I guess it's probably around 22 to 24 clicks on a Commandante. Then put in the paper filter, give it a rinse and discard the water. Then add the coffee, tear the scale and start the timer. For the first pour, we're going to add 50% of the water and the switch is left open, which is important. So I'll just start in the center and circle pour to the outside and then circle back in again. This is the pour that's going to extract all that brightness and fruitiness because it's such a big first pour. So I'm going to add 160 ml of water here, which is 50%. At 45 seconds, I'm going to close the switch and pour the remaining 50%. So again, I'm just going to circle pour to the outside and circle back in. Since we only have two pours, it's fine if they create some agitation, because that will ensure that all coffee grounds get involved in the brewing process. So instead of using a spoon to stir, you use the stream. Now we're just going to let that steep for two minutes total. I should say that this overall approach is very flexible, so you can easily brew smaller doses or bigger batches if that's what you want. So you can go as low as 15 grams or up to 25 grams and just follow the overall same approach where you decide on a ratio and then you divide it up into two pours. When it comes to deciding on a ratio, I think 1 to 15 is a good place to start if you have an entry-level conical grinder such as a Barazza Encore or Hario Porlex. And then if you have a better grinder, you could go up to 1 to 16 or 1 to 17 instead. Then you press the switch again to open up the valve. The drawdown should take between 30 seconds and a minute depending on your batch size. If you're brewing a very tricky bean, like a natural Ethiopian, it could even take a little bit longer, which is okay. It just tastes like real coffee is supposed to taste. It has that pour over acidity. Uh, kind of a fresh, sparkling uh, flavor. And then at the same time, you have that more full body from the immersion part of this brewing here. 
So this is a cup I can drink every morning. And I think for most people out there, they will probably have the same feeling once they start brewing with this method. So I guess you could probably call this a hybrid method since you both have that very aggressive kind of uh, percolation phase in the beginning that's really going to extract all that brightness and then you come back in with that second pour and that's going to ensure a fuller extraction. Also, as you just saw, this is super flexible. So if you want to change the ratio or the grind size, it's quite easy to do so while still retaining the core of the method intact. If uh, this recipe seems familiar, it's because basically it's the same blueprint that I use for my AeroPress recipe, and then I'm just changing it over to fit this brewer instead. Of course, the flavors are gonna be quite different. This tastes a lot more as a typical V60 would taste, whereas the AeroPress has that slightly fuller body that uh, comes from that particular method. So go ahead and try this uh, recipe at home and uh, please let me know down below if you have any uh, comments about it or any questions and then I'll do my best to answer you. And by the way, I should also say, if you're still a little bit unsure about the basics of pour over, then I have a video here with the uh, free mistakes that beginners tend to make. So uh, if you want to see that, then just click here and then I'll see you over in that video.